G'day, it's Scott here. I'm um, wanting to talk to you about some very basics of MPLS and go through a lightning tutorial. So, without MPLS, a traditional IP network forwards packets based on the destination address. When a packet gets received at the router, the router will look at its routing table to find the most appropriate next destination to forward the packet to. Now, these routes in the routing table are propagated through the network by the use of a routing protocol. Um, things such as OSPF and the like. So. Using a routing protocol, the routers have a common standard they know to talk to one another to be able to propagate these routes throughout the network. So this has worked pretty well. Why MPLS? The idea is that instead of forwarding packets based on the destination IP address, we can encapsulate that into a tag and forward anything beneath it. So this means we can no longer just forward IP packets, but also ATMs, Sonnet, Ethernet frames, etc. Um, it's most common use cases for it is traffic engineering, the idea to use all of your links, maybe not just the shortest path, and for extra resiliency and a fast reroute failover times for the features that it can provide. Um, both those two are outside the scope of this video, unfortunately, for you. So, some key terms. Um, some things that you might see, a label switched path, undirectional tunnel between a pair of routers. Uh, what's all really interesting about that is that the path is one, undirectional, and two, it's made up of any of the layer two to four characteristics. So things based on the destination, IP address, um, port numbers, whatever, it can take different paths. Um, some more terms, label edge router, the guys that sit on the outside they, um, of our MPLS network, and a label switched router is the guys that commonly sit inside. Now I think this is a nice little diagram to show you the key concepts. Um, um, some things that are interesting to point out is this label switched path here is denoted by these dotted lines here. So you can see that this, um, to go from this router here to this router here, doesn't necessarily take the shortest path, or presumably the path of least latency here, um, but it takes a longer path to hop round. So you can already start to see where if you use this for traffic engineering, you might be able to forward I don't know, voice traffic up one way and data traffic down the other to not saturate your links. Um, so some common terms here, this is the first time you've seen the term CE, that basically means customer edge, so that's the stuff outside our MPLS network. Um, as discussed before, the label edge router, these are the guys that are sitting on the edge of our MPLS network, and the label switched router are the guys that sit in the core. Now some common terms, we generally call the core routers here provider routers. Um, the guys in the outside provider edge routers, and then the guys that sit outside the network, a customer edge. Um, one other interesting thing of pointing out is this guy here. If the packet's being forwarded from this router to this router, the router before last in our MPLS network is called the penultimate router. Uh, he's got a special role to play, we'll come to that later. So how does this MPLS stuff work? Well, basically, we're just gonna chuck a tag, or chuck a new label, and we call what's called a shim label, just after the Ethernet frame, if it's an Ethernet MPLS network. Um, and an interesting thing to note, that these labels can be stacked on top of one another. So, what does it look like? Um, basically, the fields inside this MPLS tag is an identifier, um, experimental bit, it's the same as like IP experimental bit for things like quality of service, um, a little flag to represent whether it's the bottom of the stack, and a time to live. Um, Time to live, experiment, that stuff's very similar to how IP works. In fact, I believe the TTL value even gets copied in um, when the MPLS tag gets created. So let's move on. There are some basic operations you should be aware of when we're talking MPLS. There is um, swapping, pushing, and popping of tags. Let's have a quick look. So the idea is that all these tags are locally significant to a router. So as um, an MPLS encapsulated frame enters the router, before it forwards it on, it might have to swap that tag out for something else. On um, the push operation, when a frame comes, the tag gets added on top and it leaves. And similarly, the pop, we remove the top tag and pass it along. So where do these tags come from? Uh, well, just like we use things like OSPF, a routing protocol to propagate the routes, we use a protocol, we can use a protocol called LDP, um, Label Distribution Protocol. Uh, basically, that just means that neighbors get established and we can start um, exchanging the tags that we're going to use for specific routes. Uh, interesting things, this runs over TCP IP. Um, so, the neighborships aren't always formed for routers that are adjacent, it can be other routers too. Um, 
and in effect this builds what's called the label forwarding information base. So we'll do some common examples. Um, we'll, instead of common, let's say simple examples to help build the concepts. So once again, we'll go through our terms. If that cloud donates our MPLS network, the guys in the middle there provide a router, um, also called label edge, sorry, label switched routers. The label edge routers are the guys on the side of our MPLS network. Um, now these guys are commonly what do, what do the push and the pop operations. So if, for instance, if we're creating a layer two circuit between this router and the router on the edge, um, then it's this guy's responsibility to push the tags on so we can forward the or establish the path so this guy can pop the tags off and forward it to our expected router. Um, and the path that it takes is called the label switched path. Oh, and the guys on the outside are the customer edge routers. So let's take an example, um, a really simple example before we even worry about customers and stuff. When we turn on MPLS in a network, we might have a few routers here. Let's say router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4. Excuse the messy drawing, it's very hard to do on a trackpad. But in this example, let's just say router 1 wants to ping router 4. Well, to do that, it might have generated um, or looked up a tag that it should know to send packets to this router 4's address. It might be a loopback address in router 4. So we notice that the next router, router 2, is expecting a tag of 16 to forward to that destination. So um, first thing this router would do is push on a tag and forward it along. So generate the ICMP request, push on the tag, forward along to router 2. Now router 2 knows that router 3 might be expecting a different tag to get to that address. So we might have to do a swap operation and forward it along. Now router 3, remember that term I used, the penultimate router? So that is, he is the router before last in our MPLS network. And he's got a special role. He's going to pop off the tag and forward what's left. Um, the reason he does that is quite simply because it wouldn't make sense for this router 4 guy down here to have to, one, pop off the tag, and then two, process what's underneath. So it's just one less operation for him to do, makes things slightly more efficient. Okay, so let's have a look at an idea. We've created a layer 2 circuit between this interface here and this interface here. Um, so more often... Uh, well, a common thing you'll see in MPLS networks is the stacking of more than one tag on one another. So let's have a look at how this would work. So for this layer 2 circuit that's MPLS encapsulated, um, this router here might send up a frame. Now, the first thing we'll do is that we'll have a circuit ID with an MPLS number associated with it. So we might chuck 1, 2, 3 on. And it represents the um, layer 2 circuit between these two routers. But we still can't forward that through the network because no one else knows what that tag 123 represents or no one else in the network should care about this circuit that we've got set up, only the two endpoints. But what we do care about is getting, getting this frame for, um, to our egress MPLS router, to this label edge router, before we forward it out. So to do that we need to chuck a second tag on top to represent how to get that frame down to our exiting label edge router. Um, and this is exactly as you saw before. The routers will have a look at the tag and start doing push and pop operations. The penultimate router will strip off that tag. And what we've got left now is just the tag which represents this circuit ID. So this is going to strip off the tag and forward our layer 2 frame on. So let's do a quick demo, show you it in action, show you how to set it up. This is based on Cisco's IOS, just using GNS3. Um, Yep, and hopefully in a few more videos we'll start to see things like traffic engineering and fast rewrite, um, probably MPLS layer 3 VPNs or something first. We'll just have a bit of fun. But that's a very basic introduction in hopefully what's not more than a few minutes. Thanks. Okay, so this is the same topology as the slides. Um, what I might do is I might... start a packet capture on this interface on our first router. So we expect to see the same things that um, we discussed the theory of in the slides. Now I'll try and hammer through it quickly. Um, basically, a bit of background, we've just set up the IP addresses and the IGP, so we've got OSPF running and we should by now have a fully converged, well, now we should have a fully converged network. So let's start seeing what's going on, shall we? Yep, we can see that um, OSPF is up, 
We know all the routes for a network. It all looks pretty converged to me. So let's jump into it. A few commands that are interesting. Show MPLS forwarding table. If I run that on my bare bones non-MPLS network at the moment, it's saying that it's not enabled. That's pretty obvious. But let's go ahead and enable it. So to do that, you go into the interface that you want to be MPLS aware. So on router 1, we will want the internal FA00, the one pointing to our core provider router, to um, be MPLS enabled, but not for the customer. The customer doesn't need to know about what we're doing in the core. We're just simply providing a layer 2 circuit between this customer router and this customer router here. Um, so to do it, let's quickly, all we've got to do is type in MPLS IP, and a few interesting things happen here. You can see already we've started to get LDP hello messages. So on this interface, it's sending out some hello messages trying to discover a neighbor. Um, the second thing that's happened is if we have a look at our forwarding table now, we can see that a locally significant tag has been generated for every single one of the routes in our routing table. So let's go ahead and enable that in all the interfaces in our MPLS network. Okay, so when I'm doing this, we should see some interesting things here. Um, the LDP neighborship has come up. We can see that LDP has initiated a TCP IP connection with its two neighbors here. And now if I have a look at the forwarding table, um, we can see that for each of the locally significant tags, we know that the outgoing tag, because they've exchanged neighborships now and started saying, hey, this is the tag I'm going to use for this route, and this is the tag I'm going to use for this route. So we know that anything destined for this 10.0.34.0 slash 24 network, even though we're locally representing that by a tag of 21, we, need, we know we need to send it to router 2 as a tag of 20. So let's continue ahead. Okay, so if we go back down, you know, any of those commands I ran any elsewhere in my LDP, sorry, anywhere else in my MPLS network wouldn't have had an effect on LDP here because no routes have been added or removed, so they should just be keep on doing their hello messages. So you see we've just got keep alive happening there. Um, but now I want to show you something interesting. If I ping the loopback address of router 4 here and have a look at the requests here, you can see that in the Ethernet frame, um, instead of seeing an IP packet, we've got an MPLS label switch packet. And you can see that we've got a label 18. Um, so we're sending the label of 18 here um, for to router 2. And that's going to be switched across to that end device here, 10.0.0.4. And we expect that the penultimate device, router 2, in the replies. Um, would have just been stripping out that tag and we've got a normal IP packet. Um, so let's go ahead and have some fun now. So now I'm going to configure the virtual circuit on the interface facing the customer here. So to do that we use the command xconnect for the layer 2 circuit. Uh, we've got to give it the neighbor of um, we're going to be establishing this circuit too. So in this case, it's router 4 there. Um, now we need to give it an ID. So let's just say 123 and an encapsulation type of MPLS. So I might just bring that interface up and we'll do the same thing on router 4. bring it up, configure xconnect to router 1, um, id was 1, 2, 3, and MPLS encapsulation. So now a few interesting things are going to happen here. 
Okay, the first interesting thing is that an LDP neighbourship has now been formed between router 1 and router 4. The reason for that is if I show my forwarding table once again, we can see that we've got something else on here now. Um, we knew that for our local tag, we're going to have to start attaching or expecting the tag 23. Remember, these are all locally significant for this point-to-point -point network. Okay, and same with this guy. He expects local tag for the layer 2 circuit ID 123. Um, so let's have some fun and actually see if it works. So on our first customer router, well, I haven't done anything to this guy, he's pretty raw yet. Um, let's bring him up and router 7. Or custom reg 2, if you want to call it. Um, okay, so now it should be doing its up, up was successful, we can see that all the layer 2 frames are just being forwarded over this virtual circuit. Now, how does this look in our traffic capture? Um, we expected an up, who has 1.1.1.2, and now all of these things are all encapsulated in MPLS. So you can see that beneath our MPLS protocol we've got, once again, our Ethernet that's encapsulated within MPLS. Um, and then we've got another Ethernet tag on there to, um, for the frames to be able to be sent from router 1 to router 2. So that's based on Ethernet link there. Um, yeah, but you can see just like the examples, we've got two tags now. One to represent the um, virtual circuit and one for how to get to the neighbor. See, on the replies, we can see that once again we've just got the single MPLS tag represents the circuit to port it back to. So it just needs to have a look at this tag and know this is for the virtual circuit, pop that off and board the frame back down. And there you have it. It's pretty basic.